So Timothy Lohman from Washington University in St. Louis Back. is going to talk about uh, glutamate promoters promotes SSB protein-protein interactions by intrinsically disordered regions. Okay, uh, I do want to thank uh, <coughs> Betsy and, and Shamrat for uh, inviting me. It's really been uh, a pleasure to be here and to uh, it is also my first time in India and uh, Boy, have I been uh, uh, interested in, in seeing things. So uh, I'm going to tell you about some studies that we've been doing over the past several years on aspects of the uh, E. coli SSB protein, which is shown schematically here. And we're going to be focusing on these uh, intrinsically disordered regions that are uh, part of the uh, C-terminal tails. So first of all, a little background. E. coli single-strand binding protein is an essential protein in E. coli. Uh, it's involved in many aspects of genome maintenance, replication, recombination, and repair. And uh, uh, it binds, uh, uh, one of its main functions is to bind tightly to single-stranded DNA intermediates uh, that are formed during these uh, processes. And it binds with very high affinity. Uh, and in addition, though, it interacts with at least 15 other proteins involved in genome maintenance. And the interaction sites for those proteins are in that C-terminus. So this is just a, a, a schematic showing its uh, presumed function during uh, some part of DNA replication, where on, uh, on the lagging strand uh, DNA, you have this long region of single-stranded DNA that's coded by a single-strand binding protein, and, uh, and, and that's at least one of, of its functions. So uh, the, the protein is, the functional form is a homotetramer, as I'll show in a minute. It's, uh, each, re each subunit is 177 residues. There are two domains, the N-terminal domain, residues 1 to 112, uh, forms an OB fold, which is involved in DNA binding. And then the, the C-terminal region is intrinsically disordered, uh, and we, we refer to that as a linker region of about 56 amino acids. And then this acidic region here is the region that's involved in binding these 15 other proteins. Okay. Uh, this uh, is the sequence of the, uh, the C-terminal uh, tail. It's mainly uncharged. There are very few, only two positive charges and five negative charges. And most of the charges are, in fact, uh, in this uh, acidic uh, region. So this is a schematic of the uh, homotetrameric structure of the protein. Uh, the, uh, in the crystal structure, the C-terminal tails are, are, were actually cleaved, although we also have structures of the full-length protein, and the C-terminal tails are not visible even when uh, the protein is bound to, uh, to DNA, again, consistent with them being intrinsically disordered. So these are some early studies that we had done on the binding of the protein to single-stranded DNA using PolyDT. And the interesting observation is that uh, the protein binds in multiple modes to single-stranded DNA, and those modes are salt-dependent. And so, for example, in sodium chloride, at low sodium chloride concentrations, the, the protein binds in what we call the SSB35 mode, and I'll, I'll give you some uh, structural information on this. And then as you raise the salt, uh, it binds in, a, in a, an inter intermediate mode uh, around 56, and then uh, the, uh, at high salt, 65. So these, these, uh, sub, uh, uh, th these numbers here, 35, 56, and 65, actually reflect the number of nucleotides that the protein, that the tetramer occludes when it binds to single-stranded DNA. So it's as you raise the salt concentration, it's covering more uh, DNA. And you see in magnesium, uh, when you do the experiment in magnesium, you see the same uh, transitions, although the, the, it's shifted to a much lower uh, salt concentration. And in fact, if you do the experiment in polyamines, spermine, spermidine, it's shifted to even micromolar ranges of, of salt concentration. <coughs> 
Okay, so this is uh, uh, an attempt to help you visualize what these different binding modes might be in the, uh, the structure where uh, we, we have this fully wrapped SSB65 mode. Uh, the, in white is shown the single-stranded DNA, and it's interacting with each of the four uh, OB folds in the tetramer and the, uh, the single-stranded DNA comes in and out at about the same uh, position. And to help you visualize this, this roughly has the topology of the seams on a baseball or, or a tennis ball, whichever sport you prefer. Um, and uh, so these are, uh, again, in the 65 mode, the single-stranded DNA is interacting with all four subunits. In the 35 mode, the protein is still tetrameric, but on average, the DNA is only interacting with two of the subunits. And um, this is an early version of what we thought uh, might reflect uh, the, uh, how the tetramers are interacting in that mode. Because what we see, and these are EM uh, uh, pictures from Jack Griffith's lab uh, showing that in the 65 mode you get a much higher compaction of the DNA than in the 35 mode. And one of the main differences between these two modes is that in this mode, in the 35 mode, the protein binds with very high intertetramer cooperativity. So you see large cluster formations of protein on DNA, whereas in the 65 mode, um, you uh, at most see dimers of tetramers on, on the protein, on the DNA. All right, so uh, that's one feature that's, that's very different between these two modes. So again, what we'll be focusing on are uh, what's not observed in the crystal structure, which are these uh, C-terminal regions, um, which are depicted in this way, which really annoys Rowett, but uh, that's all we can do. So, uh, and again, these various 15 other proteins interact primarily with this uh, acidic uh, region of the, uh, of the tetramer. Okay, so early on when this protein was first discovered, this is an early uh, 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 study uh, from uh, Bruce Alberts and, and Tom Kornberg's and Malcolm Gefter's lab. Uh, this is an, uh, an electron micrograph of uh, single-stranded DNA under conditions where the, the, there's less than saturating amount of protein. And in the same field, you see DNA that has essentially no protein on it and you, uh, but you also see DNA that is essentially fully saturated with protein. All right, so this is a highly cooperative uh, system. And we had gone on to study this further using uh, an electrophoretic uh, mobility shift assay. So this is an agarose gel uh, running uh, single-stranded M13 DNA. Uh, from top to bottom, and then staining with ethidium. So we're staining just the DNA. And um, this is titrating the DNA. This is free DNA and titrating with protein. If you do the experiment at, at high salt concentration, where you stabilize the 65 binding mode, uh, then you see that on average, uh, no matter what degree of saturation, all of the DNA is essentially running in the same position. So all of the DNA has about the same amount of protein bound to it. However, if you do that experiment at low sodium chloride concentration, at, le at less than saturating uh, conditions, you see, for example, in this lane, that you see very little uh, DNA with very little protein bound and uh, DNA with a lot of protein bound. All right, so again, uh, consistent with the EM, is a very highly cooperative system. And uh, I, I want to make note of the fact that this figure legend is actually correct. All right, even though it was published in JMB. All right, so um, a, a, question, a question that is uh, uh, still something of interest is which of these binding modes are used uh, in vivo? And uh, without going into, into detail, it, it really does seem that, that all of them are, are certainly uh, populated under conditions that you would expect uh, uh, in, in, uh, in vivo. Uh, you know, early on, we had speculated that the, the 35 mode, which is the highly cooperative mode, 
uh, would make sense for it to be involved in replication in order to protect the single-stranded DNA, and that the, the 65 mode might be involved in, in other uh, processes. Uh, uh, an interesting aspect of, of this, which I don't have time to go into, is that these, the, even though the proteins are bound very tightly to single-stranded DNA, they're still able to diffuse along uh, single-stranded DNA. Okay? And, um, Again, the estimate of the cooperativity in this 35 mode, the nearest neighbor cooperativity, is about 10 to the fifth. All right? So the affinity for binding a protein a tetramer next to another one is a factor of 10 to the fifth higher than isolated. OK, so what we want to discuss is what regions of the protein are involved in this highly cooperative binding. So um, again, this is a depiction of the, the crystal structure that uh, we, we observed and attempts by us and, and others to uh, mutate various regions of this protein to affect cooperativity have always failed. We've never seen any, any uh, uh, ability to uh, mutate the, the DNA binding core and affect uh, cooperativity. And so that led us to consider the intrinsically disordered regions of uh, the, the uh, C-terminal domains, okay? So this is uh, the electrophoretic mobility shift assay that I showed you before. What we've now turned to is we use a sedimentation velocity uh, experiment, which allows us a lot, of more, a lot more freedom to uh, assay different solution conditions, which are difficult to assay in an electrophoresis experiment. Uh, so this is a sedimentation velocity experiment. This is uh, the uh, uh, set the the uh, 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 range of sedimentation coefficients as a function of sedimentation uh, coefficient, and what you see. So this is done with M13 DNA. This is where the M13 DNA uh, sediments, uh, and uh, in the presence of less than saturating wild type protein, you see this bimodal distribution, which is again reflective of this highly cooperative uh, system. All right. So this is wild type protein. Uh, if you fully delete the uh, intrinsically disordered linker, leaving the, the tip, so just replacing the linker with two glycines, you eliminate this highly cooperative binding. All right, so the highly cooperative binding seems to be uh, a, a directly dependent upon having uh, this linker. And uh, this was, uh, at the time, a, a really a, a great surprise. And, and certainly, that was something that we found extremely interesting. If you if you uh, uh, carry out a series of deletions of the linker, not eliminating it, but just truncating it, um, uh, truncating uh, this amount and this amount, you still retain the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, highly cooperative binding. You see, st still see this bimodal uh, distribution. All right. Whereas if you eliminate it completely, it goes away. If you eliminate the, uh, the acidic tip, all right, you still see uh, uh, evidence of cooperative binding, although it's, it's not as extreme as in the presence of this tip. But this at least indicates that the, the intrinsically disordered linker does contribute to uh, cooperative binding. Uh, we've done a series of experiments where we have um, linked uh, either two or all four subunits of the tetramer. Um, here's linking two, here's linking all four. And the result of that is that you make tetramers that have, have just one tail or two tails. And um, uh, both of those constructs still show uh, cooperativity, although the, the, uh, uh, the construct with only one tail has much less uh, cooperativity than the construct with two or, uh, or four tails, again, indicating uh, a role for the C-terminal tails in, in cooperativity. Now, uh, at the time we were doing this, we were also studying a similar uh, tetrameric SSB protein from uh, Plasmodium falciparum, and uh, uh, the subunit structure of that is very similar to E. coli. It also has an intrinsically disordered C-terminal tail, although the acidic tip is, is a different uh, sequence, and the, uh, it's a little bit longer. And in particular, if you look down here and compare the, the sequence of the E. coli to the falciparum, you see that the falciparum is much more highly charged than the, uh, the coli uh, tail. And so what we did was to make a chimera where we took the uh, C-terminal uh, linker 
of uh, falciparum and put that into E. coli, uh, maintaining both the DNA binding core and its uh, uh, acidic tip. And when we did that, uh, it still forms a tetramer, but now we've lost this high cooperativity. All right? so, the, this tail is important not just to have the tail, but the, the structure of the, the, the composition of the tail, the length of the tail, the number of tails all play a role in whether you see a highly cooperative uh, binding. Now, these are um, uh, computational studies done by my favorite magician, uh, Rode Papu. And uh, these uh, show, uh, these are uh, predictions of the uh, fraction of molecules with a particular end-to-end -end distance as a function of end-to-end -end distance. And this indicates that the E. coli tail is expected to be, predicted to be very much more compact and globule than this uh, uh, falciparum tail, which really uh, looks more, more like a, 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 a flory uh, random coil. And uh, the uh, hydrodynamic studies that we've done um, are consistent with, uh, with these predictions. So this is expected to be much, much more extended than, uh, than the coli tail. All right, so at this point, uh, our model for cooperativity in the 35 mode was that uh, these acidic regions might, uh, since in the SSP35 mode, only two of of the uh, um, subunits are interacting with the DNA, so the other two are free, and hence one could have the acidic tips of one tetramer interacting with the DNA binding site of another. But in addition, there seemed to be evidence for actual interactions uh, between the, uh, the uh, linker regions in, uh, of, of adjacent tetramers uh, as well. So, that brings us to the main topic of uh, what I tell, want to tell you about, which is the role of different salts in affecting this cooperativity. So uh, it's well known uh, through work uh, really uh, pioneered by uh, Tom Records Lab that uh, glutamate, potassium glutamate in particular, uh, has a, generally has a dramatic effect on the affinity of proteins for DNA and RNA. And this is a, an example. This is just uh, um, you know, studies that we did uh, a, a long time ago on E. coli SSB binding to actually to an RNA to poly U. And you can see that uh, uh, sodium bromide, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium glutamate uh, has the highest affinity uh, you know, we're in potassium glutamate, SSB has the highest affinity than all of these other salts. And what's interesting, of course, is that glutamate is, in fact, the major monovalent anion in E. coli. All right? And it's, it ranges in concentration from 0.03 to 0.25 molar, molal when you change the uh, osmolar, osmolality. So what we uh, uh, wanted to do was to look and see what effect uh, potassium glutate, glutamate might have on this uh, high cooperativity. And so these are experiments, uh, the sedimentation experiments done in potassium chloride compared with potassium glutamate. And you see at, at low salt in both of these, you see this bimodal distribution, which is in, indicative of high cooperativity. However, as you increase the potassium chloride concentration, you lose that high cooperativity. You see only a single uh, species here, whereas even in, in uh, half molar potassium glutamate, you still see this bimodal distribution. So potassium glutamate, or, or uh, uh, looking at, um, so potassium glutamate enhances this high cooperativity even at high uh, salt concentrations and these are um, again measurements of this occluded site size as a function of salt and you see that we're in 500 millimolar potassium glutamate you're in this range where you're, you're, bind, you're binding in this 65 mode so now we're seeing high cooperativity even under conditions where all of the DNA binding sites are, sat, are, are bound with, with DNA. Okay?
Um, this, uh, however, even in, in, under these conditions, uh, the, uh, uh, the observation of high cooperativity is totally dependent upon having this, this intrinsically disordered linker. If you, if you look at this construct, which we had talked about before, which is missing the linker, you now uh, lose this high cooperativity. And interestingly, uh, if you now look at uh, the effect of salt on the binding mode transition for this uh, construct with, with, without the linker, you now lose the effect of different anions. And this is something we still don't understand, but I, we think is, is likely a, a, a key issue. Okay, so that's just... Uh, a repeat there. All right, and again, if you if you replace the uh, uh, E. coli intrinsically sorted linker with the plasmodium, you lose cooperativity even in glutamate. All right, so all all of the all of the, the things that we observed at low salt hold over even in, in uh, potassium uh, glutamate. Um, acetate also promotes high cooperativity, but it's not as effective as as glutamate. All right. And so, uh, the, this high cooperativity uh, in the SSB65 mode uh, seems to involve uh, not, just not, ne just, not just nearest neighbor interactions between tetramers, but also non-nearest neighbor uh, interactions. We, we've not been able to take simple uh, icing type models, McGee von Hippel models, which, which only account for nearest neighbor cooperativity and, uh, and, and uh, uh, model the types of cooperativity that uh, that we see, and there's uh, recent data from Steve Kwasikowski's lab, which also suggests that they, they see similar things, um, uh, although they did, they did not attribute it to the the C terminal tail, but they see uh, evidence consistent with uh, cooperativity being a non nearest neighbor. Okay, so what uh, what is going on with glutamate? Uh, so here is, uh, you're all familiar with the uh, famous Hofmeister series. This is the series for, uh, for anions, and this is the position of glutamate in the Hofmeister series. Here's chloride, here's uh, acetate. And um, just to remind you, generally, uh, when you uh, have uh, 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 put systems in the presence of sulfate, what you see is that sulfate is preferentially excluded from uh, protein surfaces, and that generally tends to promote assembly processes. All right? Whereas at this end of the a series, then you see that uh, the anions are, are preferentially accumulated, uh, and that tends to promote disassembly uh, in general. Okay? So these are, this is a summary of studies from uh, Tom Record's lab, uh, the glutamate studies were published last, last year in Biophysical Journal. And in general, what, what they observed is that uh, glutamate, as expected from its position in the Hofmeister series, is preferentially excluded from uh, a large number of, of uh, regions of, of the protein. These were all done with model uh, compound studies. And what they observed is that glutamate is preferentially excluded from hydrocarbons, carboxylates, amide uh, oxygens, and uh, they tend to stabilize compact globular conformations. And we then uh, hypothesize that that's what's promoting interactions between these intrinsically disordered linkers. So again, this is just uh, this is a comparison between glutamate and chloride, the, these are uh, unpublished. The chloride studies are unpublished from Tom's lab. He, he agreed to let me show these. So uh, red is, in, is glutamate, uh, and, and uh, the regions above this line here are unfavorable interactions. So this would be preferential exclusion or, looked at the other way, preferential hydration. And you see that uh, glutamate has all of these unfavorable interactions. They only become favorable for uh, interaction with, the, with these uh, regions as well compared with, with chloride. So we think this is a major uh, uh, aspect to, uh, to what we're seeing, and, and this needs to be probed uh, uh, much further. All right, so uh, in conclusion then, we've shown that SSB can bind single-stranded DNA with high cooperativity in, in both modes. We originally had thought it was only in the 35 mode, and that cooperativity in both modes, though, is inhibited by uh, high chloride concentration.
the, uh, the uh, intrinsically disordered linker in E. coli is absolutely necessary for this high cooperativity. Uh, and uh, the high cooperativity uh, appears to be due directly to linker-linker linker interactions, although we have not, uh, we, we, we need to test this further, but it certainly is promoted by glutamate and, and acetate, which are preferentially excluded relative to water from the linker. All right, and as I mentioned, the non-nearest neighbor interaction models uh, are unable to describe the high cooperativity and so we think that there are several levels of this, of this uh, high cooperativity. So these linker-linker interactions may be similar to uh, the poly-Q aggregation that, that Rowett has studied and in interactions involved in, in liquid-liquid uh, phase transitions. And although I don't, I don't have the, the data here, I should say that we have been doing some uh, uh, studies of liquid-liquid phase transitions of SSB and we find that we see uh, droplet formations under all conditions where we see cooperativity on the DNA. And, and if you go to conditions where you don't see cooperativity, you lose that, that droplet formation. And that's with just the, the protein by itself. And so, uh, again, we're pursuing that to try and understand what these interactions might involve. So, in, in, uh, let me just acknowledge uh, my longstanding uh, a collaborator, Alex Kozlov, in the lab, who, who along with uh, a graduate student, Ming Kyung Shin, and Nicole Fabio, did uh, all of the studies that I talked about. Elizabeth Weiland um, uh, is our uh, uh, person who does all of the constructs, and Tang Ho is, is, uh, makes all of the DNA, and early studies from Edwin Anthony on the, on the, uh, on the system were uh, uh, important as well, and then my colleague, uh, Rowett as well for his help. Thank you. Thanks very much. So we begin here, Richard. Uh, that was very nice, Tim. So it seems like essentially you have sort of two mechanisms for the cooperativity. You have the, the IDR, IDR interactions, and then you have the acidic uh, tip reaching over to binding the unoccupied DNA binding sites. So. Right. Under the, the high glutamate conditions, does the cooperativity become independent of the acidic tip since uh, you're driving the IDR IDR interactions? Right. So actually, we haven't done that experiment, but but I, I would expect that it would. All right. But that that is one that we uh, that's to be done. Yeah. Well, can can I ask a question here? Uh, yeah. Here. Uh, yes. uh, you have uh, man, you know, measured cooperativity of uh, interactions, but what about the binding affinity? How does binding affinity between the, uh, the, uh, the single-stranded DNA and the, uh, the protein uh, change with addition of uh, glutamate? So glutamate, under all conditions, enhances the affinity. Okay? Now, a, a subset of that question that I did not discuss is and it's mainly because it's something that we really don't understand, is that there are very interesting effects of affinity uh, when you uh, modify the C-terminal tail. Mm -hmm. All right, so even though uh, you know, our expectation was the, the most interaction that you might have the tail is with the protein itself, all right, there does seem to be some role of the tail in influencing the affinity of the protein for, uh, for DNA. And that's something we don't does, understand uh, at all. Does change in pH uh, have any effect? Because glutamate, you know, uh, uh, compounds like TMAO, when you change the pH, it, uh, you can uh, switch from uh, preferential uh, exclusion to binding. Sure. So it does not see anything, any effect on glutamate, uh, using glutamate? All right, so we haven't done any TMAO experiments, but what pH. was your? pH. 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 You change the pH. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. pH will, will dramatically affect the, uh, the, uh, uh, interaction so as you go in lower and lower pH and that that interestingly is linked to this anion effect as well so the anion effect becomes stronger as you go lower and lower pH and that's uh, you, you you see that in chloride you don't see it in fluoride uh, these were experiments that were published before you were born but important yeah uh, yeah Mm -hmm. 
charge. Charge. Right. Also, um, it looked to me like there were <coughs> awful uh, no, a lot of uh, glycines in the E. coli and asparagines in the in the uh, plasmodium. Sure. And I wondered if you contemplated doing a, a rather more systematic difference uh, uh, in the in the sequence to find out is it the charge or is it the the asparagines or is it the link? Yes. No, the, all of those are things that we need to do and, uh, and we've been discussing that in, 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 uh, uh, with Rowett uh, as, as how best to do that, and, but we haven't done that systematically yet. Yeah, those, those are important experiments. Yeah, the, uh, no, I don't. Is the short answer. The uh, you know, in turn, getting back to the issue of which of these modes might be used, um, I had mentioned. I mean, there are a lot of just as as Betsy was mentioned with, with uh, uh, NF kappa B and I, I kappa B. There are uh, certainly significant dynamics associated with uh, uh, DNA uh, partially uh, peeling off of the of the tetramer and uh, in a. Uh, an interesting aspect is when some of these other uh, proteins that interact with the tail, with the tip, those can also influence the binding mode transition. So it will shift going from a fully wrapped to a partially wrapped structure, freeing up some DNA. Right? And, and all of this is undoubtedly playing a role. Yeah. And one more question there. So, um, recombinase A also has a C-terminal uh, disorder region, and uh, till now we don't have any crystal structures capturing that 20 residues, similar to as you observed in the tail of uh, SSBs also. So, is there anything, this is common, uh, IDPs as the C-terminal domain, C-terminal IDPs uh, have anything to DNA binding? I need uh, to hear your comments. Uh, Both belong to the same DNA binding uh, and recombination and repair. Rekia is also having C-terminal domain disordered, around uh, 30 amino acids. And SSB also similarly has such a C-terminal domain disorder. So okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I haven't followed the whole question. The Rec A? Oh, yeah, DNA binding proteins. You know, for my entire career of studying DNA binding proteins, I have avoided judiciously the conditions that everybody is now excited about, right? <laughs> because they call, they, they, they form droplets and, and all of these things. We judiciously avoided those. But yeah, so a lot of the HeLa cases that we work on have C terminally disordered regions that are involved, and many of them are involved in interactions with other proteins. I, I don't actually know um, much about the C-terminal region of Rec A, though. So, and, and, and to my knowledge, there's no, uh, there's no evidence of any direct interaction between SSB and Rec A, although they're, they're both involved in, in many of the same processes. Okay. okay. Thanks, Tim, again. So we have to move on. Yeah.